Hello, statisticians. We are starting the last section of Chapter 4, which is the probability and counting rules. You should have uh, pre-printed note sheets to go along with this, these notes. Uh, one thing I want to say is this lesson is why casinos make the money. So we're going to find the probability of an event using the counting rules. Now, last section, you used the counting rules in order to figure out how many possibilities something has. So let's get going on this. Just to review, the basic rule for computing probabil probability, this means that there's equally likely outcomes. You do the number, if you want the probability of an event, the number of the ways the event can occur over the total number of possibilities. Hence why we had one whole section on how to count up the number of ways something can happen. And you're going to be using the fundamental counting rule where if you have two different events and one event occurs m ways, one event occurs n ways, you multiply them together. And this can be strung out for many different events. Also going to be using the permutation rules. n pick r, remember that this is without replacement and order is important. Then the combination rule, n choose r, without replacement, order isn't so important. So ABC is the same as CBA. So here we go. Here's our first example. Find the probability of getting four aces when five cards are drawn from an ordinary deck of cards. So when you're figuring probability, I like to write things out in words. So the probability of four aces is going to be the number of ways to draw four aces and another card, all divided by the total number of ways to draw five cards. All right? So these are the two things we have to count up. This is an and, that means we're going to be multiplying. So we're going to take the number of ways to draw four aces times the number of ways to draw the fifth card. That'll give us uh, our possibilities for the event to occur out of the total ways you can draw five cards. There's only one way to draw four aces. You've got to draw four of them. So this is four, choose four. It doesn't matter which order you take them in. The way to draw the fifth card, there's going to be 48 cards left after you draw the four aces out. So there's 48 possibilities. So these two things are what we're going to multiply together for the top. And then the total number of ways to draw five cards is you're going to take 52 cards in the deck and you're choosing five of them. Order is not important. And then we put it together. So four choose four times 48 over 52 choose five. And if you calculate that out, you can plug that in your calculator, you'll have 1 times 48 over 2,598,960. So if you reduce that in lowest terms, it's 1 out of 54,145. Not bloody likely. Anyway, we're getting to why casinos make a lot of money and why people don't like casinos. Let's talk about transistors. Ooh, this is the, these guys, this is a transistor. I just thought that was interesting. And it was what led to the microchip. This is what was in the 50s that they invented. So let's say a box contains 24 transistors, four of which are defective. If four are sold at random, find the following probabilities. Exactly two are defective, none are defective, all are defective, at least one is defective. Remember, we want the probability of our event out of the total number of possibilities. Since these are all dealing with the selling of four transistors, four sold at random, let's figure that first. So the total number of ways to sell four transistors is 24, choose four. And that's going to be our denominator in all of these different cases, A through D. So just refer back to that if you need to see where we got our denominators. So if we want exactly two are defective, we know the probability of two being defective is the number of ways two are defective and two are not defective. So we're choosing four. Two are going to be defective and two aren't. So we have to figure that probability, and we've already figured the total number of ways to sell trans four transistors. The way that two are defective, since you've only got four that are defective, it's going to be four choose two because there's only four defective and you're going to be taking two of those. The number of ways of two non-defective, there's 24 transistors total. That means 20 are not defective. So you're choosing from those 20 and you're getting two. You're choosing two. So the probability that two are defective is going to be four choose two times 20 choose two, all divided by 24 choose four, which is what we figured up above in the, in the previous um, slide. So if we plug that in our calculator, you'll get 1140 out of 10,626. Putting that in lowest terms, 190 out of 
1,771. One thing about statistics, you gotta like numbers. We got a lot of numbers. Let's say no, none are defective. So the probability that none are defective. There's a number of ways you could pick no defective ones out of the total number of ways to sell tr four transistors. So there's 20 that are not defective and you're choosing four of them, that's it. And so the probability of no choosing none that are defective is 20 choose four out of our denominator, which we had before. So that's gonna be 4,845 out of 10,626. And I believe that's the lowest term. Oh, nope, one more. 1,615 over 3,542. So that's your probability for that one. These are all pictures of different transistors. I just thought that was interesting. Let's say they're all defective. So we're going to choose all of four that are defective. Number of ways to choose them all defective out of the total number of ways to sell the four. So if we pick all four of them, that means that we're choosing from four defective ones, we're choosing all four of them, so that's one. So the probability that they're all defective is one out of 24 choose four, so that's one out of 10,626. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm hoping that you're following along with this. Let's say at least one is defective. Now in class, people are messing up with this at least one. Remember when you see at least one, that's one minus the probability of none. And we already found the probability that none were defective. So it's one minus 1,615 out of 3,542. That's gonna give us 1,927 out of 3,542. Just remember, at least one, one minus probability of none. It kind of rhymes. All right, let's say we've got a store. We're selling magazines, six jet magazines and eight motor trend magazines. Two customers purchased a magazine. Find the probability that one of each was purchased. So we need the probability of one of each. Number of ways to buy one jet and one motor trend. That's what we're looking for on the top out of total number of ways to buy two magazines. We have six jet magazines and we're choosing one. So that's gonna be six choose one. We have eight motor trend magazines and we're choosing one. So that's gonna be eight choose one. It doesn't matter whether it's jet and motor trend or motor trend and jet, doesn't matter what order you choose them in. So in the total number of ways to buy two magazines, if you add these together, we have a total of 14 magazines and we're buying two. So put that all together and you've got your proportion, you've got your ratio rather. Six choose one, eight choose one, 14 choose two, plug and chug, bada boom, bada bing, six times eight over 91 or 48 out of 91. That's almost 50% or a little more than 50%. Okay, last but not least, combination lock consists of 26 letters of the alphabet. A three letter combination is needed. Find the probability that the combination will consist of the letters A, B, C in that order. The same letter can be used more than once. Note, a combination lock is really a permutation lock because order is important. You can allow repeats, that's important. The same letter can be used more than once. So when we go to do this, since repetitions are permitted, the total number of outcomes, you've got three blanks, 26 times 26 times 26, because you can use all of the letters over and over. So the denominator in this probability is 17,576. We want the probability, only one ABC combination, there's only one that goes ABC, so it's just gonna be one out of your total possible. So the probability that you get ABC is one out of 17,570. It's your turn to do these probability problems. I am gonna be checking the last two problems on your notes. We'll see you tomorrow.